Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for that fantastic introduction, and to you and Ian for that fantastic welcome here to Manchester today. And it's fantastic. We're launching our election campaign here in Manchester. Manchester, Manchester shows the way in many, many things. One it showed last Thursday was by electing Andy Burnham as the mayor of Greater Manchester. And can I, Andy, Andy, Andy will be a great mayor, but just think how much more Andy will be able to achieve if he's working with a Labour government committed to the many, not the few. <laughs> Andy, thanks. Congratulations on your election, and the people of Manchester are lucky to have you as their mayor. Well done, Andy. <clears throat> We have four weeks. We have four weeks to take our message to the voters to convince them Britain can be better. It can be transformed. It doesn't have to be like this. We can transform Britain into a country that, have, instead of being run for the rich, is one where everyone can lead richer lives. <laughs> And I mean richer in every sense. Richer because all of us have potential to fulfill, family to support, interests to pursue. Richer when that potential that is there in all of us is not held back. Because there is no doubt this country is being held back. If your children aren't getting the education they deserve because the class sizes are too high, then your children are being held back. If you're a young couple or anyone trying to get a home and can't make a home because rent and house prices are too high, then you're being held back. If you've worked hard all your life but you can't pursue your dreams of your retirement, because you're supporting your family well into their adulthood. Then you too are being held back. But Britain is a rich country, the sixth richest country in the world. We caught a glimpse of that wealth only two days ago when Rupert Murdoch's Sunday Times published its rich list. In the last year, Britain's 1,000 richest people have seen their wealth rise by 14% to £658 billion. That is six times the total budget of our National Health Service. Imagine the outcry if public sector workers decided to put in for a 14% pay rise. Just imagine it. But it's no surprise that the richest have got even richer after the tens of billions the Tories have handed them in tax cuts. That's what we mean when we say the system is rigged for the rich. So thanks for making that clear, Mr Murdoch. <laughs> And so I don't know if Rupert Murdoch plans to give us any other help during the election campaign, but we're grateful for that information. In fact, I'm more likely expecting hostility. Our challenge to a rigged system is bound to meet hostility. Change always involves 
taking on vested interests. And there is a real danger that the Tories' scaremongering and spin machine will make some people settle for less than they should, resign themselves to things the way they are, underestimating just how many more burdens the Tories could impose if their mission to rig the system for the rich isn't halted. The stakes are very high. We know from last week's local elections how big the challenge is. We have to convince the skeptical and undecided they're not sure which way to turn. Who can blame them? People are alienated from politics and politicians. Our Westminster system is broken and our economy is rigged. Both are run in the interests of the few. Labour is under attack because we are standing up to the elites who are determined to hijack Brexit and pay even less tax and take even more of the wealth that we all create. Labour is under attack because we're standing up to the corporate interests plundering our National Health Service. How much more will be privatised if the Tories get another five years? We're drawing a line under decades of privatisation from energy to rail to health to social care. And that That privatisation has made some people very rich indeed, but it's not delivered richer lives for the majority of our people. In the coming days, we'll be setting out our plan to transform Britain with an upgraded economy run for the many, not the few. Theresa May thinks she can dodge the Tory record by claiming she wants to build a fairer Britain, that she cares about working people. <laughs> Does she think people will forget how the Tories have actually treated working people? It was this Tory leader who sat alongside David Cameron in government for six years. She was with him when they introduced the bedroom tax. What is remotely fair about the bedroom tax? What was fair about racking up tuition fees? Or taking benefits away from people with disabilities? Yes. Or about closing a wonderful labour achievement, our Sure Start centres around the country. <laughs> or starving our schools, starving our schools of the cash they need to pay teachers and all those that work in those wonderful teams in our schools. Or opening up the National Health Service to be feasted on by profiteers. In case in just in case their talk of fairness doesn't, doesn't wash, they have another card to play. That this election is all about Brexit, and who can play at being toughest with Brussels? Labour will not allow the Tories to put their party interests ahead of the real national interest, the interests of the people of this country. This, this election isn't about Brexit itself. That issue has been settled. The question now is what sort of Brexit do we want? And what sort of country do we want Britain to be after that? Labour wants a jobs-first Brexit. 
a Brexit that safeguards the future of Britain's vital industries. A Brexit that paves the way to a genuinely fairer society, protecting human rights and an upgraded economy. Labour's plan to transform Britain will mean a big deal to upgrade the economy, new infrastructure to support the industries of the future, and an investment in training and skills to equip our workforce to compete globally. It also means rebuilding our national health service and social care services with the funding they need. It means building a million homes to rent and buy. And it means tackling the scandal of air pollution, which contributes to 40,000 deaths per year. We won't be paying lip service to working people. We will introduce a comprehensive program to strengthen rights at work. Make sure new jobs are good jobs. And end the race to the bottom in pay conditions and job security. Low pay and insecurity have spread like an epidemic under the Tories. Labour will invest in skills, jobs and take action to enforce a flaw under employment standards right across the board so that all jobs are decent jobs, so that all workers, the true wealth creators in our society, can play their part in transforming Britain and benefit fully from it. That's why we're fighting to win this election. So we can transform Britain for the many and not the few. When we win, the British people win. The nurse. The people win. The nurse, the teacher, the small trader, the carer, the builder, the office worker. They all win. Labour is offering a real choice a real alternative to the rigged system holding us back and to the Conservatives who are running our country down. The economy is still rigged in favour of the rich and powerful. When Labour wins, there will be a reckoning for those who thought they could get away with assets stripping our industry, crashing our economy through their greed and ripping off workers and consumers. <laughs> When, when did the Conservatives, David Cameron, George Osborne, Theresa May, Boris Johnson, ever stand up to their financial backers and demand our money back? <laughs> instead, instead, they make others foot the bill. They make our nurses, our carers, our soldiers, our disabled, our young people, trying to get a home of their own our elderly looking for dignity in retirement and those working hard to get on. They make them foot the bill. This makes me angry and I know what makes the people of Britain angry too. So today I say to tax cheats, the rip-off bosses and the greedy bankers, enough is enough.
in this election, in this election, Labour is standing for decent jobs, investment for the future, shared wealth creation, security at work, affordable homes for all, and a fully funded national health service and schools. <laughs> Training and skills, an end to rip off privatization, fair taxation, and a fairer, more equal country. As we set out our detailed plans for Britain, the scale of the change we're offering will become very clear. Let's turn our country round. Let's come together to transform Britain. Together, we can win. For the many, not the few. So, don't don't wake up on the 9th of June to see celebrations from the tax cheats, the press barons, the greedy bankers, Philip Green, the Southern Rail directors, and crooked financiers that take our wealth and have got away with it because they are the party they own. That is, the Conservative Party would have won. We have four weeks to ruin their party. We have four weeks to have a chance to take our wealth back. We have four weeks to show what kind of country we are. We know that the people of this country don't pass by on the other side. That is the principle we will take into government so that we can unlock every person's potential and everyone can make their contribution, their best contribution to our society. We have four weeks to win and transform Britain for the many, not the few. We must seize that chance today and every day until June the 8th. Thank you very much.